Hey everybody, Mike here. That's right, today we're pouring short-handed. I had a guy call in sick. If you're new to my channel, my channel's all about concrete work, so if you like that kind of stuff, please go ahead down there and hit subscribe. For you returning viewers, you can see that Luke isn't here today. So Luke calls in sick, and he's, he's been working for me for about 20 years. That's probably the second time in 20 years he's called in sick. So, I mean, Luke and Darren, they never call in sick. It's got to, So he must have been really, really bad if he had to call in sick and miss, miss a day of work. So that's me and Darren there. Darren's in the blue. I'm in the green. We're working right down by the guy that did the foundation. So the guy that did the, the concrete walls here is in the white. His name's Jim. He does foundations. And the, and the guy in the hat is Harvey. And they both live right down here in this area. So Jim decided just to show up and help out. And he calls Harvey to come and help. Now, Harvey works for himself, too. He's self-employed. But he's done concrete his whole life too, so he knows what he's doing. So they both decided to show up and help us get the floor poured, which was a big, big bonus for me and Darren. Made our lives a lot easier this morning. Now we're using the Tremie chute to get this thing poured for the first part of this. This is a one truck floor, so it took about 10 yards to do this floor. It's 32 by 24, 4 inches thick. As you can see, it's got a vapor barrier under it. Um, it's got the fiber mesh in it. It's got 3,500 PSI. So it's a good mix, good floor mix. We don't need fi uh, wire mesh in here. We don't need any rebar in here. It's got a really good uh, crushed stone base that was compacted really well. Plus, we got the fiber mesh in the concrete. So when you pour a floor inside a foundation like this, it's not going to go anywhere. The only really thing it could do would be settle. So if we're concerned about it settling, then we just have the excavation compactor come back and make sure he's got the sub base compacted the way it should be. You can see we're pouring about probably a six inch slump there. We got water reducer in the crete, so we can pour it fairly loose. I'm shooting a pad there with the laser, getting our center grades to where they need to be while Jim's over there magging the edges to a chalk line we got snapped around there, getting those where they need to be. We'll get, you know, two-thirds of this truck dumped out, and then we'll move him off to the side so we can finish out and jump out the door. There's a door over here to the right in the foundation. We can we can just get out there right there. Using the Tremie makes it pretty easy. It's, it's almost like using the conveyor truck. <laughs> just can't reach quite as far as the conveyor. But it cuts down on... Cuts down on the splatter and, and getting getting pretty dirty there when you just drop it right out of the chute. So this this is the really the main difference right here when when you uh, have a guy call in sick and there's only three of you, is you miss that guy that does the puddling behind you. You know the guy doing the raking. So this was the big help having Jim and Harvey here today is we had some guys that could rake behind the screed. And that just means a lot less stopping and starting for me and Darren. There was a year, I can't remember how long ago it was, it was, it was over 10 years ago when it was just me and Darren all year long, just the two of us pouring these floors every single day. And we did it. I mean, it was a lot of work, but we did it. Yeah, you can see the truck backing down now. So Harvey's up there back in the truck, which is... You know, that's super helpful because that's something I would normally have to do. And instead of me being up there, I can just get this, some of the screeding done. We decided just to hand screed this today. No uh, no power screed, no vibra screed. We had it in the truck, but because of the size of this one, it wasn't that big. We just decided to do it by hand today. This is how I was taught when I was... Oh, it was 1981, so I was about 15, 16 years old. This is this is the way I was taught to screed right here. My very first, my very first introduction to screeding was kick screeding, just like this. And here I am, 40 years later, still doing the same thing. It's really it's really pretty easy once you learn how to do it. It isn't really that hard. The key is just having somebody behind you that can rake the concrete. 
There, we call that a bay. So we got that bay done. We'll get some of it bow floated and then we'll get that other bay up there. And the truck, we'll probably give the, what's left on the concrete truck, maybe a couple gallons of water. He was pretty hot when he showed up. This was about an hour's drive for him. So by the time he shows up, it's, the, you know, the concrete's starting to warm up inside the drum a little bit. This is another thing about being shorthanded here. See, usually when there's three of us, the the two guys will start to screed right now while one guy's bow floating, kind of like what Javi's doing now. And then we'll get bow floated down there a little ways so we can reach it from the other direction, and then he'll jump right in and start doing the raking. So how many of you guys have guys that call in sick quite often or do you have guys that just never call in sick let me know down in the comments there I mean we're basically a three man crew in the summer we get you know we'll, we'll have a few people in the summer show up so and then when school starts they gotta go back to school so this, we're basically three a three person crew for most of the year so we learn how to do things without help sometimes, you know, without those extra people. Yeah, you can see Javi and Jim Rake in there. They know what they're doing. They've been doing this for years too. Both of them for a long time. Now we got the little eight foot chute hooked on. We use that chute I don't know, not every day, but we use that shoot a lot, that little 8-foot shoot. That was a 16-foot shoot at once, and we ended up cutting it in half, so we got two of those 8-foot shoots, and we still have a 12-footer and a 16-footer. We, Because we shoot a lot here in Maine where we're from over the walls like this. When they backfill a foundation, a lot of times they'll pump the foundation walls because they're not backfilled, and you can't have a truck get too close to the the edge of the foundation where it's been all dug out so they'll pump the walls and then they when they get it backfilled the access is usually a little bit better so we'll usually just shoot it but sometimes we still need a little bit extra shoot so we carry those extra shoots with us all the time that's a floor drain Darren's going around over there on the right that little green thing so we'll slope a little bit of the floor right to that floor drain. And then that black pipe behind Darren over there by Harvey is just a water line. That's what a lot of basements, that's basically all a lot of basements have around here. They got the water line that comes in and then they got a little floor drain where the utility room is going to be. A lot of houses that we have like this have a drilled well for water. We don't have, they don't have city water or city sewer so they have a drilled well and then they have like a septic system that the excavator has to install. So sometimes you'll see that piping in the basement too for the septic system, but not this one. This one must be uh, up, up above. So now we'll get that screeded. You can see that's how Darren and I usually screed right there with no puddlers. We can do it, it just takes a little slower. It's about a 14 foot straight edge we're using today too. It's 13 or 14. We got all kinds of different lengths of those too for different situations. We're gonna get, we'll screed right over the top of that drain and then we'll, we're gonna mag float the edge first, get, get it magged to the chalk line, get it magged around the drain. We set that drain about three eighths of an inch lower than the height of the floor. So we're just gonna slope around it about, probably about a mag width, maybe a little bit more than a mag width just enough to catch any water from the water tank that's going to sit in there when they hook the well up. 
just in case they got to drain it or it leaks or something like that. But that's basically the only reason that floor drains in there. Now, Darren's going to stay in power trial this today by himself. That's not on this video, but we'll just leave one guy here usually. Even if there was everybody showed up, we'll just leave one guy to power trial on something like this. And then me and the other guy, you know, if it was me and Luke, we'd go set another floor up. We'd go, or we'd go pour another floor, one or the other, and uh, get something else done today. Well, we got concrete lined up for, for jobs like this. We have concrete lined up for the next two weeks straight. So every single day for the next two weeks, we have concrete on the books. And so it's just a matter of making sure that these jobs get ready in time, making sure that we juggle, you know, the weather. Obviously, that's a big issue for most days. But we always have concrete lined up for two weeks in advance on jobs. Anything more than that, and it usually ends up getting changed anyway. So that's about enough that's at least you know one job a day that's at least one job a day if not sometimes two jobs during that day so that's quite a few jobs lined up and honestly I'll be honest with you my schedule changes very very often you know due to someone usually someone else the excavator not getting something ready the plumber not showing up uh, the plumbing not being inspected uh, something you know it's always something it seems like we're changing juggling schedules but at least we got the concrete lined up and ready to go so that's kind of partially how the scheduling works when we do stuff we plan on being on a job like this for just you know one day basically here to pour here to finish and then that's done then we move on to the next one so at any point at any given time I'll have 40 or 50 jobs on the list you know and out of those 40 or 50 probably 20 or, or at least half of them are, are like ready to go like people are waiting for us so it's always it's always pretty hectic especially when it, when we get some rainy weeks trying to you know because you can't make up you can't really make up stuff so you gotta you gotta double down and, and just get caught up somehow but that's usually how the scheduling goes on these jobs and if we can if it's good weather we can usually keep up with most people because we do a lot of floors for foundation guys like this. A lot of the foundation guys around here don't like to do their own floors, so they that's why they hire us. So it's a pretty good business around here to be in the floor business. Um, unlike what some people think, they don't think this is a business from what I've seen in some of the comments, but it is. It's a big business, and if you know how to do it right, it can be a really, really good business. So. Again, guys, I want to thank you guys for watching. Come on back. Uh, if you haven't hit subscribe, go ahead down there and hit subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.